I'm going to tell you everything you need to know before buying the Aegis Vanguard Hoplite and we're starting right now. Aegis Combat Assist activated. Systems green. Thank you so much to all the support from patrons, channel members, and Twitch subscribers that make this possible. Welcome to a Star Citizen's Buyer's Guide. This is Subliminal here, and today we'll be discussing the features, functions, and benefits of the Aegis Vanguard Hoplite. We'll cover a brief overview, take a tour, compare stats with similar ships, review pros and cons, and give you my thoughts on the Hoplite. If you haven't seen it, my loadout guide for the Vanguard Hoplite can be found here and on the end screen. I go live on Twitch just before every YouTube release. Come and hang out. Enough with the formalities, let's get to it. The Aegis Vanguard Hoplite is a cross between the winning Vanguard Deep Space Fighter and a dedicated boarding ship. Adapting the reliable design for amphibious operations, the Hoplite is the perfect tool for inserting an armored strike team in with enough firepower to get them out again. The Hoplite is manufactured by Aegis Dynamics, a human spacecraft manufacturer based on Cestalus. Today, the company is a major manufacturer of both civilians and military crafts. The Vanguard Hoplite has three other variants, the E-Warfare Sentinel, the Dedicated Combat Warden, and the Fighter Bomber Harbinger. As of today, the Hoplite is not available for sale or upgrade on the Pledge Store standalone, but when it does, it sells for $235 and for a very limited time. It is available as a loaner for Redeemer owners, and the Hoplite is available for purchase in-game for over $3.1 million off of UEC. Now that you know a little bit more about the Aegis Vanguard Hoplite, let's take a tour. If you'd like to skip this tour, the timestamp is on screen and in the description. The first thing we notice is the large nose gun staring off into space. Behind that, we can see the four proprietary ballistic repeaters on the nose. Here we can see the intakes and our retro thrusters glowing. I'm quite fond of this. Way up above this, we have a manned turret with two size 2 ballistic repeaters. Moving on, beneath the hull we have the tracked landing system gear exclusive to the Vanguard series. Here we can see the Vanguard's wings are tucked away in landing mode. Around the rear we can see the dual main thrusters with two large HDMI ports. Underneath here is where we have the main and only entrance into the Vanguard. The starboard side is identical to the port side. Oh yeah, check out that glow. Let's take a look inside. As we close the door, we'll turn around to see where the quantum drive is stored. Heading back into the cabin, the starboard side has a massive weapon rack for 10 weapons and at some point even more supplies. The port side has two very comfortable looking drop seats with another rack for two more guns as well as two more seats with communication equipment. Back to the starboard side, we have another rack. This one seems to be able to hold larger weapons. Let's head towards the flight deck. It does have a door to separate the pilot from the drop crew. On our way up, we can see that there is a hidden compartment labeled radar with a ghostly looking shield generator in it. The port side has shield one, power plant one, and life support. The starboard side has shield 2 and power plant 2. Getting closer to the cockpit, we have our last set of component housings that house our coolers. Alright, and finally we made our way to the cockpit with our HUD in the center, annunciator panels up top, a 3D radar, and 4 MFDs below. The Vanguard series does not yet have an ejection system and the hoplite may never have one. If you're in the middle of typing a comment below about how I missed the turret, just stop. The turret is located in the middle of the cabin. Inside, we can see that the turret doesn't have a great view, but it's not terrible. The turret features a 2D radar and four MFDs, but no ejection system. Now that we've taken a tour, let's see how it compares to other ships you might be considering. For comparison, I have selected 10 ships, some drop ships, the other Vanguard variants, and some multi-crew ships. The Google Sheet document with this data is linked in the description. The Aegis Vanguard Hoplite weighs in at almost 230,000 kilograms and takes 7th place. It fits in at 38 meters in length and ties in last place with the Vanguard's Freelancer and Valkyrie. It totes zero SCU of cargo as well as most other ships on this list. It has a max crew size of 2 and ties in last place with most ships again. 
It carries 2,500 quantum fuel units as well as every other ship on this list except the Hurricane. It crawls by with an SCM speed of 171 meters per second and ties in fourth place with the Sentinel and Harbinger. It strolls by gingerly with a max speed of 1022 and ties in seventh place with them again. It has a maximum pitch rate of 54 degrees per second and ties in third place. It has a maximum yaw rate of 54 degrees per second as well and takes second place this time. It has a maximum roll rate of 110 degrees per second and ties in third place. It has a total hull HP of 32,000 and takes first place. It has a physical armor damage reduction of 2% and ties in sixth place. It has an energy armor reduction of 10% and ties in second place with the Cuddy and Vanguards. It has an EM, IR, and CS reduction of 0%. The only ship on this list with stealth reductions is the Prowler. It blasts its way in with a default pilot DPS of 1852 and takes 4th place. It shoots its way through with a default turret DPS of 598 and ties in 5th place with the Miss. It has a stock missile payload of over 30,000 and takes 6th place. And the Vanguard Hoplite is available for sale in-game for a little under 3.1 million off of UEC and takes the 8th spot. I'm excited to announce a new art series, Vessels of the Verse. This will be the first of many designs that will be released alongside buyer's guides and loadout guides. It will be available on display in 48 hours, on the merch store in 24 hours, desktop wallpapers are available right now to Twitch subs, patrons, and YouTube channel members, and mobile wallpapers are available for free via link in the description. All right, let's weigh some of the pros and cons. For pros, I'd say it's weapon payload with a size five and four size twos is unparalleled. Well, excluding the other vanguards. The extra boost of hull HP over the rest of the vanguard series is great. It's great for multi-crew combat with its man turret and six drop seats and weapon racks. The weapon range of having a size five weapon on the nose is around 5,000 meters. That's a huge advantage. You can take out some of your enemies before they even get into range to do damage to you. Its armor has some physical and a decent amount of energy reduction. Having 2,500 quantum fuel units is nice. You can equip the fastest size 2 drive and still almost make a round trip from PO to Microtech. Having the weapon center mounted is great because if you lose a wing, you don't lose firepower. And having the cabin space is great for box missions. For cons, I'd say its max speed is terrible. Having bespoke weapons means you don't have as much of a variety of choices. As well as having them fixed removes the option to be fully gimbaled. It doesn't currently have an ejection feature. Compared to other dropships, it doesn't have very many seats. For example, the Cutlass Black can hold just as many ground troops in the cargo hold. It's a dropship that has no weapon placements to support troops once they're on the ground like the Valkyrie can. It has only one egress point. This will make the drop troops exit predictable. And finally, my biggest gripe with the Hoplite is its price at 3.1 million alpha UEC. This is outrageous. So, what are my thoughts? In a vacuum, the Hoplite is a brawler that brings a ton of firepower to the fight. It's practical and ticks almost every box except cargo hauling and mining. It's a great, versatile ship that I've enjoyed flying around and testing for this review. However, this isn't a vacuum. Well, it is if you're out in space, but it, anyway, aside from being terrible at its primary function, what makes the Hoplite not something I want to fly doesn't have much to do with what the Hoplite can or can't do. It's what the siblings can do at their price. I touched on this briefly, but you can purchase the Hoplite in-game for 3.1 million alpha UEC. Not saying that this is a bad price, but I can purchase a Harbinger or Sentinel for around 2 million alpha UEC. Two ships that excel at combat due to having either an EMP or torpedoes all on top of what makes the Hoplite great. The fact is, in my opinion, in the game's current state the Hoplite is one of the worst dropships. The Cutlass Red is the best, change my mind. Or you can get a Valkyrie or Prowler that would excel at protecting ground troops via the multiple egress points or weapons that have a great view of the ground from beneath in multiple directions. Heck. Even a Cutlass Black can serve the purpose of getting ground troops to the objective safely at a fraction of the price. So until there's more gameplay features implemented, I'm going to have to pass. Those are my thoughts, let me hear yours down in the comments. If you haven't already, make sure you check out my loadout guide for the Hoplite here. I went live on Twitch just before releasing this video, come and hang out.
If you enjoy this channel, there are so many ways to support it, ranging from free options like Prime gaming subscriptions and sending out for UBC in the verse, sub club subscriptions, merch, and straight up donations. Head over to subliminalschannel.tv to learn how. Your support makes this channel possible. If not, your viewership, liking, and subscribing is greatly appreciated. To continue watching, here's a video I think you may like. Here's a video YouTube thinks you may like. And until next time, citizens, I'll see you in the verse.